بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد We stopped last time with choosing a wife and choosing the mate for a sister to choose a brother and a brother to choose a sister and we said the the best thing that we could build our relation on is what huh? religion okay if you choose somebody for his religion everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy if you choose somebody for the look the look will go away if you choose somebody for the money the, he could lose the money in one day if you choose somebody because of any reason other than the religion it could be gone in, in seconds, okay? You see people, they fight bankruptcy, they're millionaires. But if you choose according to the religion of Allah, Allah will give you the first promise which we talked about, remember? What is the first promise for somebody who wants to get married? Allah said we will do what? Provide huh? for this. Huh? Baraka. Before the barakah, even before the barakah. The rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he ordered the people to get married. In yakunu fuqara'a, wa ankihu al-ayama minkum, in yakunu fuqara'a, yughnihum allahu min fatih. If they are poor, Allah will provide them. And subhanallah, Allah said Allah will provide them. But when Allah talked about divorce, قَالْ إِنْ يَتَفَرَّقَ يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلَّا مِنْ سَعْتِ If they are divided, Allah will provide each his provision. So the Quran says, when you come together, there is more barakah. When you're divided, there is less, less barakah. Because if Allah would provide somebody 1,000, it will be enough to support two people. But if they are divided, then they, 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 they are divided the 1,000 into 500. So 500 to him, five, so it gets less, no barakah. Allah says, when you divorce, you go away. Each get his provision. But when you get married, then Allah will increase your barak, uh, risk and Allah will add the, the barakah into that risk. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was very poor and he chose according to the manners because that time there was no religion and he chose Khadija radiallahu Now if a brother, if we ask a brother, would you like to marry somebody who's older than you or younger than you? Okay brothers who don't care which is very weird but actually they do they want somebody younger okay they, they won't accept somebody that's maybe way older maybe one year two years I'm not talking about that I'm talking about 10 years difference no but everybody's like no Rasulullah when he wanted to choose his first wife the most beloved to him why did he choose Khadija well Khadija chose him radiallahu anha and she as we said this is how you choose your mate she looked around and she said she asked, she was married before, she had children. She asked uh, uh, Maisara, her servant, she said, when you travel with Muhammad, I want you to pay attention to him, watch him very closely. So when he came back, he told her, listen, everything that I saw in this man, I haven't seen in anyone. He was not a prophet yet. He was 25 years old at that time, okay? Very young. This is like a young age that everybody wants somebody at their age or maybe two years old younger or maybe one year, okay one year is acceptable two years maximum she said when he told me about his description I haven't seen anyone who's more truthful than him that when he sells he doesn't lie he doesn't play people he doesn't say this is wallahi I bought it for 600 and it's actually 100 okay and he swears and people they do that he says I didn't see any of that I saw the good in him she said she sent the women and she said, go and ask if Muhammad wants to get married. In reality, how many of us today, maybe sisters, this question, how many sisters today are willing to do that? If they find somebody that they, they really like because of their religion again, okay? They really like and they think they are very religious. They send their brother to get to know him. They tell their fathers, if the father is very close, because we have some parents, I know some sisters, some brothers, we have some parents, they don't accept that. Okay, even for the, the brothers, if he goes to his mom and says, I want to get married to this girl, why? Where did you see her? How did you see her? Like she wants to choose for him, but he can't see. Even for the men, not only the sister. But before that step, it's choosing the mate. Umar radiallahu anhu, his daughter is Hafsa. Her, her husband, first husband died. So Umar went to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, do you want to marry Hafsa? Okay. 
he's not selling his daughter, okay? Don't, don't get it wrong. Don't, I know, always I have problem with the sisters on this side because of these issues. He was choosing, he looked around, he chose the best. Why? Because Rasulullah says, when you marry a believer, if a woman marries a believer, if he loves her, he'll take care of her. And if it happens that he hates her, then he will separate, they will be separated with no problem. You have people now, I just had a issue. He wrote in the, in the dowry to pay if they divorce, 20,000. So problem happened between him and his wife and they were cousins, cousins, very close. So now he has to pay her how much? 20,000. 20, so he doesn't have the money and if he divorce, he has to pay it. So what he ended up doing? Giving her hard time so she could ask for divorce because if she start asking for divorce she gets nothing she actually returns what he gives her so he kept pushing her to a level that he be he no, of course okay he buried her up uh, the sister she had uh, children they're in the streets there's no way where is she gonna go with and some some families divorce to them is like uh, a disease if a woman is divorced that means she's dead that's why, subhanAllah, Islam changed all of that. But our, our tradition brings, brings them back. So she said, what am I going to go? If I get divorced, my father is going to say, I don't care, you got divorced, it's you. And nobody's going to look at you. I'm not going to take care of you. I have other sisters and other uh, children to take care of. So she kept, she was so patient with the man till it got to a point where she went to the court and said, you know what? Just divorce me. So the man says, if you want divorce, you just... Forgive the 20,000. She said, here's the 20,000, you keep it. And if you want me to give you money, I'll give you money, but just divorce me. This is what Rasulullah said. If you choose somebody on religion, if he likes her, then he'll take care of her. If things happen, then it's very easily that they all go away without any problem. And it happened in history. One of the imma used to come to the Sheikh every single day after each salah. And he used to say, my wife does this, my wife does that, my wife does. So one month, two months, three months. One time he came to the masjid and he was so happy. And he prayed and he left. Okay, the sheikh said, okay, maybe, maybe she didn't beat him up today. Okay, first day passed, second day. Sheikh said, come here. MashaAllah, your wife changed. Alhamdulillah gave it's either two things. She died or Allah guided her. He said, no, but I divorced her. So he said, okay, tell me about her. The man said, I can't tell you about her because she's no longer my wife. So after the divorce, he's protecting the honor of that woman that lived in his house because he was a true believer. He used to complain when she was his wife. Now when she, when she got divorced, he said, she's going to marry somebody else, correct? So she's no longer going to be my wife. So I have no right of talking about her. We don't see that in our days. When problem happens, even lies starts. They tell, this man is evil. He did this and this and that. And they make up things just to make the other person look evil and look, as a, uh, look like a devil. So Umar said to Abu Bakr, would you want to marry my daughter? Abu Bakr didn't respond and Umar left. So second day he found Uthman. He went to Uthman, he says, do you want to marry Hafsa? Uthman says, I'll tell you tomorrow. Came second day, he said, well, I thought of marriage and uh, I don't want to marry today. Like, I don't... He said, I had something in my heart toward Abu Bakr, not Uthman, because Uthman said no, so that's fine. But Abu Bakr didn't say anything. So he said, I went to Rasulullah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I told Abu Bakr to marry my daughter. And he said, he didn't even respond. And I told Uthman, he said no. So Rasulullah said, would you accept uh, me marrying your daughter, Hafsa? I said, of course. Okay, agree. Went back to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr saw him at the masjid. He said, yeah, Umar, you look upset. He said, yeah. And you see, this, this is the Sahaba. Maybe we should talk like a whole lecture about Sahaba only, how they dealt with each other. Sahaba, they never carried things in their heart. Whatever they had, they said. Not like you see a brother does something or a sister, you don't talk to her for three years. And then we say, what's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. So you lie, and there's something wrong. So Abu Umar said, yes. 
yesterday when I told you to marry Hafsa, you didn't even respond. At least said no if you didn't want. Abu Bakr said, Wallahi Umar, not that. But the problem is, I was talking to the Prophet and he asked me about Hafsa. He said, what happened to Hafsa after her husband died? And I said, nothing. So I knew that the Prophet talked about her. So it was a secret between me and Rasulullah. So I didn't want to tell you that the Prophet was talking about her. So I waited till he said, and he, he told you. Then now I could tell you what the Prophet said. And this is very important also when we get to the point that can we uh, get engaged, can we ask somebody to get engaged while they're engaged? And this is one of the, the rules, inshallah. So they looked for the best, and we talked about the story of Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak last time, and the story of, of some of the companions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Uthman came, he married Ruqayya, married Umm Kulthum, when she died, he married Umm Kulthum, when she died, Rasulullah sallam said, if I have a third daughter, I would have given it to Uthman radiallahu Rasulullah chose to Fatima, Ali ibn Abi Talib. So choosing if the father is responsible and he's choosing for his daughter, he should choose the most religious. In reality now, we all go to school. And if you go to a sister and, you, and her father says, I chose this man, she feels kind of what would be the best wording to use? Bad. Okay, I won't use any other. She'll feel bad. She'll feel like her father is actually trying to get rid of her. And I'm not going to marry this way. I have to love the person. I have to know the person. I have to see the person. I ha okay, the, all of these are your rights. But listen to him first. Maybe he has somebody that you might like. Somebody that is religious. Somebody that he chose, as long as he chose according to religion. Not that he says, okay, you say, I know this brother, he's very good. Or the brother says, I know this sister, she's very good. And he says, no, no, I want you to marry your cousin, she's rich. This moment, you could say, well, Jazakallah uh, khairan. You go ahead and marry her if you want, but I'm not going to marry her. Okay? If, of course, if she's not related to him, he could marry her. So, the first step, as we said, is choosing the meat. Second step, after doing that, if you have somebody in mind, then the engagement should start. And what engagement means, that the person represents himself to the woman and tells her what feeling he has for her. Not show his feeling and start being romantic. No, but tell her, I want to come and ask your father to get married. Or, she, or if the sister could send somebody that if he's interested in, in marriage. So this is the engagement starts. Engagement is not obligatory. You could just get married right away. You go to a person and say, I want to marry your daughter. Okay, bismillah, tomorrow we do the wedding. Things are not like that. In reality, things are not like that. You can't find somebody today that you go to him and say, I want to marry your daughter. He says, tonight is the marriage. And nobody does that. Sisters, mashallah, they take their time. They have to make their special dress, which is their night. I understand, but a special dress, by the way, you shouldn't be too, too fancy with the dresses too, because especially the dress that has a tail. Okay, that, that one is haram to wear by the way. Anyway, that's not our topic. Okay? So when we get to that, the dress, we'll talk about it in details, inshallah. There's a point. Of, anyway, why we got into that? <laughs> and the brothers at the same time, they have to buy their what? They're not gonna go buy, they're not gonna go to their wedding with shorts. I'd assume somebody would do that. I know somebody would do that. Okay? That would be, breaking the rules, but at least he has to buy his suit, invite people. So nobody, it takes now, even the process takes so long that engagement breaks in a lot of cases before they even start. Why? Before, as, as soon as they meet each other, they start talking about things that is not time yet. Okay, what are you gonna get me? What are you gonna buy? Where, we didn't even get to know, each, we didn't even know each other yet. And you're already asking me what I'm gonna get you. So engagement is not obligatory. There is no such a thing as, like, you must do engagement first, meaning to be engaged for a while. But it's recommended. Okay? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or we could say mustahab, or we could say ja is allowed. You're allowed to get engaged, but it's not obligatory. Because I know some people, they get married right away. Okay? When I did my, my, uh, my marriage, I, did, uh, I didn't do engagement. I asked for my wife's hand, 
and then we said when is the when are we going to do this, uh, the contract uh, next week bismillah in two weeks we were uh, engaged with a contract okay and then i came back to the united states went back after two years and and got uh, the what we call the wedding the official wedding so there was no engagement when we say engagement we mean that it's a promise to marry engagement means what a promise to marry nothing else so the word khitbah means that you're asking for somebody's hand you're promising somebody that you're going to marry her or you're promising her family that you're going to marry her nothing more nothing less okay she doesn't become your wife she should not ask you every time she, she want to go out assalamu alaikum should i leave my house and you're like no don't leave your house why she doesn't even who cares if you said no she wants to go out she asked her father her father said go or not to go you have no responsibility so engage some people because some people take the level of engagement higher than what it is so they start telling their wife orders or their, their engaged person, they start giving them orders. Don't do that. Do this. And like, my father's right there. Okay? I'm going out with him. No, don't go out with him. She should say, Jazakallah khair, then she go out. <laughs> it's not haram because there is no responsibilities at that time. The time of engagement is only what? A promise to, to marry. You're saying that this person, inshallah, will be my wife, or the sister saying this person will be, inshallah, my, my husband. Finish. So in engagement, a lot of mistakes happen. The first mistake that people do, they think engagement is like marriage. So it's okay to go out whenever they want, without anybody with them. It's okay to hold hands and more. Okay, I'm just gonna say and more and you know. They, they think now it's fine. It's okay to take pictures together and post it and every day there's a different picture. They're, they're sitting down this way, he's hiding their head this way. They think it's fine. And subhanAllah, all of these things, not only they are wrong as religious wise, but they are also very dangerous as experience. Why? What if that person that you took 20 picture with, and wallah it happened. Engagement breaks before it even starts. And this person went to the father and said, okay, I have your daughter's pictures. You either, either give me money or give me, wallah it happened. Don't be surprised. You don't know the person because at that, the moment of engagement when you ask, our emotion works more than our mind. The sisters are feeling like they're flying and the brothers, they are daydreaming. Okay, it's, it's, it's a moment that everybody lives, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. So at that time, nobody's thinking about anything. There is no way that it could come to your mind that this person might do something to you. But look around and see the experience. That's why Rasulullah he got engaged to Aisha for how long? That's a good question. Two years. Okay, and I'm not gonna go into that topic, okay? He got engaged to Aisha when she was seven, and he got, he got married, radiallahu anha, and she got married when she was nine, okay? And don't even go into that topic right now because I'm not going through it, okay? I know this is one of the doubts that people bring. And our, some of our scholars wanted to skip out of that, so they said, Aisha, no, she was 15. But Aisha, Rasulullah died, she said, when, he, when she was 18. Okay, so it makes sense. Anyway, and it was revealed to Rasulullah to marry her. Okay, so first it's order of Allah. But he got engaged to Aisha. And we told you her story last time when he asked her father. They got engaged for, for two years. Okay, let's see what Rasulullah did in these two years. He didn't go and visit Aisha every day and sit with her and took her out. He didn't touch her hand and sit with her and take these nice pictures and flirt with her, okay? He didn't take her in a car and just dr drove somewhere and sit at the beach and hold hands and come back at the night, 12 o'clock, and then cause problem at the family and so on and so on and so on. Because we said, time of engagement, there are two types. There are strict people, very strict, that they tell you, you like my daughter? Yes, okay, good luck, see her at the day of wedding. Okay, she might change. 
And people change uh, daughters, by the way. The guy is like, this is not who I saw when I got engaged. He's like, no, it's her. <laughs> okay, bismillah. <laughs> he didn't see her. That's one side. Okay, we don't agree with that. We really don't agree with that. I am saying right now, and some people might hear that, think that I'm going loose now. Okay, <laughs> forget that side. Okay. Well, it happened. It happened. It's very famous. He came to the sheikh and he said, yeah, sheikh, I have a problem. He said, what's the problem? He said, I, I came from my wedding. He said, why are you here? You should be at home. He said, this, she, she's not my wife. <laughs> he said, what do you mean she's not your wife? You got married to her? He said, yes, I wrote the contract. I saw her once, but it was not her. Maybe she had make No, not makeup, not the look. It's not her. The other one was blonde. Blue eyes, he said, maybe she had, well, it's not her. So he went to her father. The father says, we can't marry the younger one till the older gets married. So we give you the older and then the younger, inshallah, give it. But I didn't choose the younger. I, I chose the younger one. I didn't choose the, the elder. So people do that. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. But we're not saying we open the door, especially for the sisters. And let me tell it to you right now whether you get upset or not, or you'd be happy with it. If a person has honor and dignity at the beginning and shows that, then they'll continue in that state till the rest of their life. But when they give up everything because of either love, the name of love, or the name of just wanting the person, and they, whatever, 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 they, it feels to the other side that this person is worth nothing. So after marriage, by the way, this moment he'll do whatever you want. After you marry, that's it, you're his wife, you're at home. Things will change. But subhanAllah, you give him that tough time at the time of engagement, polite, the respect increase. Don't think he's gonna run away. If he really wants you, he's gonna come after you. I'm serious. So we are not with the side that says, you know what, you come home, you ask for my daughter, so we get engaged. We agree that you're engaged, okay? Whether you wear the ring, okay, let's talk about the ring part first so we could start the process. Is it okay to wear the ring? Yeah, no problem. Okay, this side said yes. What about this side? I know you guys are cheap, you don't want to even buy the ring. <laughs> well, you need to buy something, man. But I'm talking about the ring that they put in the right finger and then they move it when they get married to the left. Yeah. By the way, this is more of a custom now than religious ones. You have to know the story of it, okay? The story of it came from Christianity. They used to go to the church and then the priest will stand with that ring. He'll put it on the top of the, of the first finger, the big finger and say, by the name of uh, God. And then he'll move it to the next one and say, by the name of the Son, Son of God. And then move it to the third one, say by Trinity. And then put it into the, the fourth one. This is where it came from. And then they invented something came from the Greek. They said that when you get married, to keep that attached, that love between the men and the women, the vein of the heart runs in this finger. So that's why they move it from this finger into this finger. Okay, believing that, that the vein connects here. And so if the man takes it out, he will have no more love for his wife. Okay, and this really happened. A woman came one time and she asked the sheikh. She said, yeah, sheikh, I want divorce. He said, why? I said, I gave my, my I left my husband at home. His head is bleeding. What, why, what did he do? He said, listen to the story first. And uh, if this is the belief, then this ring is haram. The engagement ring is gonna be haram. If this is the belief, that you believe by putting it into this finger that is connected to the heart. Why? Because Rasulullah said, at tiwalatu shirk. What is at tiwala? Tiwala is like a magic that they used to do. They go to a magician and they, the woman says, um, I want my husband to love me. So he'll make something and give it to her. She will keep it with her. As long as this thing is with her, her husband will love her. Rasulullah said, this is shirk, this believing in Allah, because the heart belongs to Allah. If the person is gonna love you, he's gonna love you no matter what you have. If he's not gonna love you, then that will change, that will change. So if this ring is worn because of this belief or this aqidah, then the, the ring is haram or the engagement ring is haram. But if people wear it just to show that they're engaged, so nobody will ask for her hand, and the brother is like, okay guys, girls, sorry, I'm taking, okay? Even though the brothers, when they go to school, they take it out. I don't know why. This is a trick. But it's okay. But if they do that, I know. that SubhanAllah, I know all these tricks, okay? We, we played them before. So, so this, where were we? Oh. Where were we? The women came to the huh? 
the woman came to the sheikh. She said, in the morning, her husband came back home and the woman, as soon as he came in, she looked totally changed. And the husband said, Assalamu alaikum, she didn't even respond. She said, right away, do you have your wallet? He said, yes. You have your keys? Yes. You didn't forget anything? The guy is like, no. Did you want anything from outside? She said, you sure you didn't forget anything? Wallah, you don't love me. And the guy's like, I didn't even do anything yet. I just came from work. And Wallah, I love you and you know that. And she, so she started complaining. He says, okay. So he sat down, maybe she will relax. He changed his clothes, he came back. Anything to eat? I didn't cook today. <laughs> call somebody, go find your, he's like, oh, no problem, we'll call, we get an order from outside. I'm not coming out with you. Okay, I'm gonna go outside and eat myself and come back, maybe if you, he came back. Same thing. And subhanAllah, he said, what's wrong? What did I do for this? She said, that's it. This is over between us. And she took something and she hit him in his head. She said, this is for you to remember. And the guy was like, Jazakallah khair, but what to remember? She said, and she took out the ring and she said, you left this at the, at the sink in the bathroom. So that means you no longer love me. The guy's like, Wallah, I've been looking for it. And I thought I forgot it at work. I was making wudu and usually when I make wudu, I just remove it and put it back. I just forgot. He says, no, you didn't forget your wallet. You didn't forget your keys. You don't forget to eat. You don't forget to, and she started. And he's like, okay, khalas, relax. For last time, please. And she's like, that's it, it's over. If it gets to that level, then this ring is haram. So anybody who wears that ring, just for the engagement, the purpose of in getting engaged, why, why do we wear it now? If this is not our intention. As we say what? To let other people, to let other people that the sister, khalas, they know that she's taking, meaning somebody's already uh, asked for her. And this is another ruling engagement. If somebody asks the sister to get married, okay, not the sister, I'm saying, if he let her know and let her father know, if the sister agrees or show that she's kind of interested, can somebody else come and ask for her hand? Huh? Yes or no? No? Hmm. If they don't know. Huh? Yeah. If they don't know, they're gonna come and she should say, well, <laughs> believe it or not, she should. <laughs> She shouldn't say the, take the ring and be like, okay, let me just see if he's better. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. You know why? Because there's always confusion. Like the brothers, they go and they check three, four girls at the same time. Okay? You go home thinking, you know, Bismillah, the first one, she has one of the characteristics that I like. But the second one, she has something that I'm interested in. And the third one, she's very knowledgeable. And the fourth one, then who? He's like, okay, let's go to the beginning again. First one is... <laughs> No, just one individual. Okay, focus. <laughs> That's what we try to say. Okay, same thing for the sister. She shouldn't say anybody who comes to ask. She gives like a period of time, six months. Anybody welcome for six months, and then I'll pick and choose. You'll never choose because every individual will have something that you'll be interested in that you won't find in the other person. We're not the same. Okay, somebody you might like his behavior, but he doesn't pray. Other person prays but he has a loud voice. Another person debates all the time. Another person argues. Somebody who's cheap. Somebody who's very much Allah generous. You'll never find one person who's completely perfect. So if Rasulullah said, لا يخطبن أحدكم على خطبت أخي None of you should over engage upon his brother's engagement. So if you know that your brother is interested, you see Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he heard that Rasulullah had interest in Hafsa, what did he do? He stepped back. He didn't even say anything. So you're not allowed if your brother, if like, like nowadays, and, and this is what I saw it in uh, one of our uh, MSA, uh, two brothers, they had conflicts. So I got close to them. And the reason that I found that the first one actually was interested in, in one of the sisters. And he talked to her and she's like, okay, let me think. And she was like, okay, we could get engaged, but not, nothing except engagement, just to get to know each other. Second one got interested in her too, from him talking to him a lot. And this is one of the issues that Rasulullah says, it shouldn't be like that. A woman should not describe other women in front of her husband, as if he could see her. So as he kept talking to him, he got interested in the sister, so he went and he asked for, for her hand. 
she saw things in him that she liked more so she broke the first engagement and got engaged to the second person it's not haram but the ulama says it's dislike because it creates hate in people's heart when you over engage when you go so what can we do two choice two things you either wait till they break the engagement but don't be the reason okay don't cause problems till they break or ask your brother to let go and you go and engage you could do that but when can we ask people for engagement when can i ask a sister for engagement if somebody asks for engagement but she did not respond yet okay so now it's her choice she's still thinking now i could go and say okay i'm also interested in marriage why because two people came to fatima bin tuqais radiallahu anha so she ran to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam she said ya rasulullah two people asked for my hand abu al-jahm and and muawiyah ibn abi sufyan radiallahu anhum both she said who uh, uh, radiallahu anh. He said, who should I choose? And this is again another responsibility that comes up. If somebody asks you for a brother or a sister, should you tell him what you know about them or no? If they ask yes. If they ask yes, mm, <laughs> you say yes, if it's still going on, not past. So if the brother used to take drugs in high school, but now he's no longer doing it, you should not say about that. If the sister, for example, was doing something that you know, but she no longer doing that, you shouldn't say, well, let me tell you, man, 10 years ago, she was like this. No, you should keep it a secret. But if it's going on now, then you should tell it. And it's not backbiting. The ulama says one of the things that is not considered backbiting is if somebody asks you for a fatwa and you give it to him, like a question. So uh, Rasulullah said, Al Mustasharu Mu'taman, the person who's asked, you ask, you, you counsel somebody, you say, Mahmoud, what do you think about Brother Yusuf? Why? Because he came to ask for my daughter. Mahmoud shouldn't say, Astaghfirullah, A'udhu Billah, La ilaha illallah. Backbiting and make it a big deal. No, he should say what he knows and he shouldn't add to it. Okay? Wallahi, I don't see him in the masjid, so I'm assuming he never prays. <laughs> no, you say I don't see him at the masjid, but don't assume that he doesn't pray. So they, the ulama says what? To a level that, the only thing that you know. So these two men came to ask. Rasulullah said, okay, the first one, Abu al-Jahm, he does not put his stick down, meaning he always carry his stick on his back. This could be translated into two ways or explained. That he hits women, like he, he has experience in hitting women, so that's why he never put his stick down. Like he's all, is trouble okay or it could be translated that this man is always traveling like at that time you know they carry their stuff it could be a thing. don't read the hadith like that and be like astaghfirullah these companions were very bad no this is life so he said never put his stick down meaning either he was always what traveling and i like that more because the hadith didn't say that he hits women all the time eh, some explanation says that because she asked to get married so why did he say he never put his stick down because he hates women. Maybe that's where they got it from. Then he said the second one, but Muawiyah qala su'luqun la malala. The word su'luq means he's very poor, has no money. So now he told her, Rasulullah didn't lie to her. He said the first one is what? Either always traveling or he hates, he hates women. He's very aggressive. Second one, he's good but very poor. How about Usama ibn Zaid? She said, I didn't like him. But when I got married to him, I knew that this was the best choice. Why? Because Isama was what? His father was a slave, Zayd ibn Haritha. So he's a son of a slave, kind of. So she was like, um, status-wise. But she said, Allah puts the barakah in my marriage after I married him. Because Rasulullah said he was more religious, more better than the, both of them. So she said, I chose the one that has more religious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the barakah in, into her marriage. Tayyip. Back to what we were saying. When the person comes to ask for my hand, can the man sees, can the man see the women? Can he sit with her and see her? The fuqaha, rahimahumullah, you guys hear that and you're like, ha, 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 ha. We see them every day, 24 hours. They're facing us in school. They're seeing, I'm talking about a, a special meeting right now, okay? This is not like you're meeting, hey, Osama, assalamu alaikum, how are you in school that now? This is now, uh, a meaning that, that involves some kind of emotion. 
So that's why the ulama puts rules for that. First, a man is coming to ask, can a sister put some kind of beauty on, like makeup and beautify herself? Yes or no? The sister are going to say yes. Because they're going to do it, you know. <laughs> Even if I say no, okay? But I'm not saying no. Huh? They can? Yeah. No? Ziad is very easy, mashallah. Yeah. Here you go, you don't have to cost yourself anything. You can just You're that. married? <laughs> no? Okay, I need to put your name on the easy list to get married. You give the answer. Huh? I give the answer? Bismillah. I will say yes. I will agree with the sisters because some of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Subay al Islamiyyah, she used to put hinna and she used to put the eyelash, which we call the, the kuhl, on when, when people start coming to ask for her hand. But the ulama allowed the sister to put some kind of makeup on or some beauty on, like kuhl. You know the kuhl, right? Okay? Or some, some kind of decoration on the hand, that's it. Okay? But they say to a level, that makeup or that decoration, that you would not fool the other person. Again, if your eyes are not green, and they look green, then they... Oh, this is serious stuff. Same thing for the brothers. Okay? Contact lenses. Correct? You should tell him, hey, this is not my real eyes. Okay? Okay, if the brother... Let's go to the brother's side. Some brothers, mashallah, the guy right now, he's getting married, he has some uh, gray hair, he goes and dyes his hair black, and he goes, how old are you? In the 20s. Your 40s. <laughs> the ulama says, this is the haram that we, have, we go to. So if the sister is able to make, of course, her hijab is on, she's going to suit with the person, she's going to talk to him, she has some form, not, not a makeup that... A woman does to her husband by themselves at home, not to that level. Again, enough that she is kind of decorated, no problem. But don't fool the other person. So, for example, there, there are some things that, like some some uh, um, so, some chemicals that makes the skin lighter, okay, or some things that stretches the the, the eyes or the the cheeks or the all of these things that later he could find that it was not true. It's haram. But regular regular stuff is allowed, inshallah. No, because Sahabiyat used to do that. Again, this is the time of fitna. Okay? So you have to measure the fitna. And again, there are some sisters. Why, why am I saying sisters? Because most of the brothers don't even care. They just comb their hair and they go wear a nice suit and that's it. Okay? If they go to the barber, alhamdulillah, they are very generous. <laughs> they cut their hair. But most of the time, they just take care of themselves. Okay, combing their hair, wearing uh, a nice suit. And even sometime, they, okay, and, and I'm going to tell the brother some advices now when you go to a sister's house. But for the sisters, they are the one welcoming the person. So sometimes they do things that is kind of over. I'm not telling you, okay, come out with a fussy hair and say, this is me regular time. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not saying do that, okay? Even if the man has to see the hair, we're going to talk about is it allowed or not. But I'm not saying do that. I'm not saying come outside like in your pajamas and be like, I just want you, see, want you to see me the way that I live so you won't be surprised later. No, I'm not saying that. And anybody who says that really has no proof. La for Quran, wala sunnah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The women, the Sahabiyat, used to do things as they looked more beautiful, they decorated with the hinna. As we said, they used the kuhl in their eyes. They looked kind of nice and they dressed good, okay? Again, the dress should be in a way that is not over colorful. So the man is not looking at you, he's looking at the colors in the dress, okay? Not to that level. And at the same time, it should be something uh, reasonable. That again, the ulama put the condition that he would not do it. Huh? Fool or trick the other person for both sides. A brother who's bold goes and buy a, a wig that looks very nice. As soon as the sister sees him, she's like, "Mashallah, I like long hair." And he's like, "You see?" <laughs> okay. The night of marriage, she's like, "Oh, Mashallah," and it's it moved. <laughs> what happened? He's like, "Subhanallah, miracle!" No, no miracles. You fooled the sister to get married. The conditions of the contract says that she has the right to break that contract. And you give her everything. Can somebody break for that reason? Yes. If this is the, the matter, 
Okay, so for both sides, it should be what? Something that is reasonable and it shouldn't be fooling somebody else. For the brothers, when they go, especially, of course, the sisters later, they'll give gifts. But when you go first day of engagement, the best ruling as a sunnah is to take something with you. Okay, don't go and spend three hours at their house. They offer you tea, sweets, baklava, candy, chocolate, and you're like, anything more? You didn't even bring anything with you. So when you go, offer something the first day. And the best thing to offer is something that purifies, or something that purifies the heart and something that fills the stomach. What fills the stomach? Fruit. MashaAllah. You guys want fruit? You ask for it. Okay. Whatever fills the stomach is fine. And something that purifies the heart, meaning either a good word, a Quran that you give it as a gift, something that you start with, something that shows that you are religious, but you're not fooling them. Not that you go and grow your beard that day and they want long beard or not short beard, I don't know. Or you wear the thobe and the ghutra, and then after that they never see you in that format. No, no. Something reasonable. Taib. Can a brother see a sister and what is allowed to see in the sister? Yes. Uh, leave the questions till the end, inshallah, so we could collect it all. Can a man see the sister or not? Yes. 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 If he doesn't want to see me, then he goes home. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you start your life right, then inshallah your life will end right. If you start your life displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know for sure and take it from me, there will be no barakah in your life except if you repent and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Some people, they start their life with music, first night. Okay? And you ask them because they tell you it's an enjoyment. The, some some uh, sisters, they wear things that is in, inappropriate during their wedding time. Some brothers, even they say, you, you must bring a belly dancer to my wedding or else I'm not going to get married. <laughs> this, they want to start their wedding something that is, I, they know this pleases Allah, but they take the excuse that it's, it's only one night. Well, this is not only one night. This is the starting off of a lifetime. You're starting a family that either pleases Allah and then you come later and you say, Hey, Sheikh, I have a kid who's 20 years old. Man, I don't know what to do with him. I always ask, how did you start your wedding? He said, oh, may Allah forgive us for these days. Look, like, subhanAllah. So you first, the first plant that you put on the ground, the seed that you started your life with, you expect it to what? To put, if you put a seed, apple seed, what the tree will come out as what? Apple. Orange, right? No way. Correct? So if you, whatever you plant, it will grow. Whatever seed you put from the day one, if you set these rules, the Quran and the Sunnah and the regulation. So if we live our life, and if, if something that we like, but it displeases Allah, if we leave it for Allah, know for sure that Rasulullah said, if you leave something for Allah, Allah will give you what's better than it. Allah will give you what? Than Not Allah will give it to you, Allah will give you what's better. And let me prove to you that, that from a, a life story that's kind of related to Mary, but a little bit not. There was a scholar that traveled from Morocco, okay, or Spain area, in Andalus, uh, Spain, to Mecca to make Hajj. At that time, back, back old time. So he got to, uh, on a ship, he got to Mecca, did his Hajj, had 10,000 10, with him in his pocket to go back to where he came from, okay? Looked into his pocket, he couldn't find his money. And believe it or not, there are people who steal inside the Kaaba. You gotta be surprised. There are thieves inside. They go, they're, you're making tawaf, and they're like, Bismillah, Bismillah. They actually pick your pocket, so you need to be very careful. May Allah forgive everybody and guide everybody. So this man lost his money. So he said in Mecca, how is he gonna go back? Tried to find a job, couldn't find a job. So while he was doing tawaf, he found a, a, a Nicholas that cost at that time 20000 Okay, so he picked it up. <laughs> Not like, you remember the story of the guy who said, huh? Very loud, no, he didn't do that. He actually went and he said, anybody who, found, who lost an ankle, come to me. And he told everybody in Mecca, at that time, haram, not like now in Mecca, you lose something, good luck, you never find. You go to the lost and found, maybe. So a man came to me and said, I heard that you have something. He said, describe it. So he described his necklace, he gave it to him. He said, subhanAllah, I don't know if, if anybody would do that nowadays. 
here is uh, 5,000. This cost 20. He said, Wallahi, I'm not going to take money. I didn't do it for money. All I want is if you could just pay for my ship so I could travel back to where I came from. He said, no problem. Come with me. He took him. He paid for a ship. He, he both traveled. He went back to his village. This guy went back to Spain, Al Andalus. In the middle of the, uh, the, the, the sea or the ocean, high waves came. Everybody drowned that was in the ship. They all died except him. He was saved and he got to an island, a small village. And he sat there. He doesn't know where he is. So a man came, was traveling by. He says, a man was walking by. He said, who are you? You're a stranger. He said, I, I lost my ship and I came from Spain and I was trying to go back. He said, where you came from? He said, Al Andalus. He said, Subhanallah, a ship comes every six months to our area. So you have to wait with us. Maybe come and we find your home. So they got him into the masjid and he said, live here. So he lived in the masjid for a while. So they came in to pray. They found him reading in a book. So they told him, you're able to read and write? He said, yeah. And I'm also like a scholar. <laughs> so they said, but that said, this is, we've been looking for that. We had an imam. He died like, okay, a week ago or so. And we can't find anybody to teach our kids or to teach us. You stay with us. I want to go back, all of this. They said, just stay with us and we'll give you money and give, build your house. And when the ship come, you could go back. So six months passed, a ship came. So they actually didn't tell him. So, and they said, you know what? Sorry, we, we forgot and please forgive us. He's like, Taqullah, I want to go back. I don't want to. So they said, the only way is to keep him here is to get him married. So they found him a, a, a wife and they, they said, day of marriage, her uncle came, he came. The women were sitting down. So she was sitting, her uncle was sitting and people were sitting around, he was talking to her and he was not actually directing his eyes to her, he was directing her eyes to the necklace that she was wearing. So she felt kind of embarrassed, like, Is he, does he want the necklace or does he want me? She thought like, okay, he was like greedy and he wants... So she said to her uncle, she said, I don't want to marry him. He's looking at my necklace. So he asked him, he said, why, why are you looking at her like that? He said, Subhanallah, this necklace has a story. And he told them the story. He found it in Mecca and he gave it back. As soon as he said the story, they were like, Allah Akbar, Allah. And the man was like, what's going on? I didn't tell you like, a, it's just a story. Everybody does that. They said, no. Subhanallah. Her father was the man that you found the necklace. And when he came back, he used to tell us my only wish before my death to find this man that found the Nicholas, and if one day I would find him, I would marry him to my daughter. So she was like, she, they were so happy and so on. He said, Allah replaced me, Allah gave me, because I left it for Allah, okay? It was haram to take, but if he used it, maybe he could say, it's a necess necessity and I need it to save my life, but he didn't do that, he left it for Allah. He said, I got married to her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided not to provide us with children. After a while she died, I inherited the necklace and all of her money. So Allah paid me the necklace and more than what I have given before. And this was always the reward. Not just one time, you read it in the history of the Sahaba, history of the Tabi'een and so on. So if you leave something for Allah, as we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you. We came together. Can I look at her now? What the ulama allowed? Majority of the ulama, they allowed the person to look at the, 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 the woman's face and hands. Her face and her hands, okay? Some ulama, they allowed the man to even look into more than that, whatever that could get him to accept to marry this sister. And if they do that, they have to do it hidden. I know this sound, <laughs> this is a fiqh issue that you have to understand it a little bit because there's a lot of confusion into that. For example, if I go to somebody and for me, if I don't have a mother to see her, it's better to send, and you know, the, the problem is if you send your mother or your, your sister, they have different uh, categories, okay, than the one you expect. She goes and she tries to pull her hair. She makes sure her hair is, is not fake, okay? And she says, okay, bismillah, she start touching stuff. Hey, relax. I don't care about all of that. Maybe I care about personality. They don't know that. So the ulama says, what if hair is something that is important, it's a must? And you have to see how long her hair is. If you're able to send somebody to see it, like your mother, your sister, somebody, it's fine. Okay? If not, then you could peek. You could see it without her noticing that or without her seeing that. But 
This is after the time you intend to get engaged, not the time that you're looking or searching. Because this is going to open a door, oh, I, now I could go to everybody's house and see everybody and have fun and, and then later I decide. No, 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 no. The ulama says when you take the step forward, because Rasulullah said to Jabir, when he got married, uh, forgive me, he said to Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba, when he got engaged, he said, Did you see her? Al Mughira radiallahu anhu says, No. He said, Go and look at her. It's, it's a condition or it causes the love between both of you. So the ulama says, What he can see from her is her face and her hand. Why the face? Because the face tells the color, the face tells, huh? Nothing, huh? <laughs> the kind of the personality of the person, the smile and so on. Why the hands? <coughs> Age, how skinny or how, nobody wanna use the other word, huh? <laughs> how skinny or how over skinny they are? Let's see, you like that one? A little bit skinnier than the skinny, or skinnier than the skinny, I don't know. Body size. Uh, body size, in general, mashallah, you saved us. <laughs> okay? The, to, to people, this is, this is important. So the ulama says, even to that level, some of the ulama says that he is allowed to see part of her leg, or she, like if, if he, All of these things are according to the custom, to, to, to the tradition, in the place that we are able, or we are living in. If you go to a family, and they come from where an area that you're only, maybe they allowed you to see her, her daughter or his daughter once in your lifetime. You don't go and say, can I see her hair? You'll be killed. Okay, you have, to be, you have to be wise. But now, we're talking about the United States, where we live. In reality, we see the sisters all the time. In reality, we see the ones that we're interested in. So what, what are you gonna see? But what they allowed is you and her sitting together at the house or somewhere where you have a third party, a third person. Because again, engagement is only what? Anybody remember? Is only what? <coughs> a promise. So you always have to have somebody with you. Do I take my little brother with me? Yes. Do I take my father with me? Yes. Do I take my uncle with me? Yes. Do I take my brother with me? Yes. The sister has to have somebody who's a mahram, somebody that he, she can't marry, like her brother, her father, her, her brother, her father, her, uh, uh, um, uncle. her uncle, and so on. But I'm not gonna be able to speak to him if I sit with him, or he's gonna be sitting, my father is there and you want me to ask him questions, I'll be embarrassed. The ulama says no. If he goes to your house and he comes in asking for engagement, you could sit you and him together, somewhere where people are seeing you, but they cannot hear you. Understand that? So you could tell your little brother, go buy you ice cream. But don't tell him, leave us alone and come back after two hours. No. They consider that khulwa. They consider that as being together with nobody. But you say, we're in a restaurant. Yes, but everybody who's sitting in the restaurant are what? Non huh? Non Not only non-mahram, they're strangers. So if you're sitting together and you hold her hand, do you think any of them will care? And in, in America, uh -huh. They won't even care if you do more, okay? We're talking about maybe in America here, they, if you are away from each other, they look at you weird. <laughs> it's opposite, okay? That's why you have to be, you have to know the place. Like somebody came to a sheikh and he, he asked him, he said, yeah, sheikh, can you give me permission to do uh, zina, like fornication? So the sheikh used the hadith of the prophet. He thought he's talking to somebody like Rasulullah's time. He said, do you like it for your sister? The guy said, so what? And the sheikh said, okay, I can't keep going. <laughs> you ended the story. Stop for Allah. Because Rasulullah man came, he said, do you, he said, do you like it for your mother? The man said, no, of course no. He said, do you like it for your sister? The man said, of course no. He said, then people don't like it for their mothers or their sisters. So the sheikh was trying to use the same methodology that the, the, the Rasulullah used. And the guy was like, if she wants, if she has a boyfriend. And he's like, okay, stop, khala, stop. let's do something else. So yes, they are allowed to sit. They are allowed to talk, okay? And again, when we say talk, we say to get to know each other. This is only engagement. Please, brothers and sisters, whatever we see on Facebook, okay? And the 20,590 million pictures that you take with your fiance. Okay, here you go, I got the word fiance. <laughs> okay. Now I know because there's two engagement, okay? 
that all of these things, okay, he's not allowed to put his hand on your shoulder. He's a stranger to you. He only promise. What is what is engagement mean? That you are his fiance. Meaning what? That he is able to leave you any moment without any regulations or rules or anything that is holding him. He doesn't have. He doesn't owe you anything. So that's what engagement is. Engagement is saying that these two are getting to know each other, and then if they if it didn't go on, they could what? They could separate without without anything on them. He doesn't owe you anything. You don't owe him anything. Maybe he gave you gifts. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about that. If he gives you gifts, do you return it back if the engagement breaks? Of course, the sisters are going to throw it in his face. The brothers are not going to give back the perfume. and The, the ulama says the things that are usable, you don't have to give it back. <coughs> but if you give her a ring that is $10,000 and you break the engagement, you say, Gazakallah, can I have it back? Okay. But if you give it to the, as a gift, and she says no, if you break the engagement, you shouldn't get the ring. If she breaks the engagement, you could get the ring as long as you didn't force her to break the engagement. Because I know you guys. You take these rules and you say the Sheikh said. No, no, no. So this is the rule. But regular gifts, like you gave him a, a, a well, what's coming soon? Uh, um, Valentine's, mashallah. That means people are aware. Hopefully they're married, inshallah, to give their husband. Valentine's, right? She gives him a... Uh, teddy bear, teddy bear, chocolate. Teddy bear. <laughs> she gives him a... <laughs> flower, chocolate, and the guy eats it. And they break after one week. She shouldn't go and say, where is my chocolate? <laughs> no, not to that level. If you're going to leave each other, let's leave each other with uh, peace. Okay? So you guys remember each other in, in good ways. When you say this sister, you always remember her in good. She would then, we don't want a sister to say, oh, I remember this guy. He even asked for the chocolate that he gave me. <laughs> she will say that. And the brother will, will say the same thing. But the ulama says the things that are valuable should be returned if it's exchanged. If it's a man who break the engagement, he should give her what, he, what she gave him. If she breaks, she should give. If they both decide and they want to switch, it has to do with the tradition. Some places you have to give back everything that you take from him. Some other places you don't have to give anything because they consider it as gifts and gifts cannot be returned. So we talked about it's allowed to sit. Tayyib. Now we got to engage. How long the engagement should be? I know it took longer. Plus we should stop. How long the engagement should be? The longer the better? No. Okay. The short is the better. As short the engagement get the better, the faster the process of marriage get. The longer the engagement get, the harder that it makes. Why? Because you know a lot of things about the person that you start thinking, how am I going to deal with him? How am I going to deal with this guy in, my, in the rest of my life? But when you get in, in married, as we said, you're going to find solutions to this, to this problem. So if, I, if a person got engaged for six months, should he go and visit every single day in six months? I know <laughs> they wanted that. Okay, can I call her every single night before I go to sleep? Well, the ulama says if you're going to call her, and look what they said. Call her, it's fine. You want to call her, go ahead. But as the talk that you're going to say to her, as if her father is able to hear you on the third line. Seriously. Because sometimes we lose, we lose our... our uh, we, we let go of the deen a little bit and we take it too easy. And then we start, before we sleep, I have to hear his voice, okay? And he has to talk to his sister or else he's not going to sleep. He's not going to do qiyam layl but he's not going to sleep. Okay, so they talk to each other till Fajr time. And she's like, okay, it's time for me to go home. And he's like, you really want to go? Yes. So she hang up. And then he sleeps. And then is cold. Correct? This is what people do. Unfortunately, that is not a lot. You want to do that? Then do the contract engagement that she's your wife, but she stays at home and you stay at home. Now she becomes your wife, meaning in rulings. You could talk to her, okay? You could go out with her without uh, a third person, okay? You could touch her hand. And more of the ulama that when we come to the contract, we'll talk about it. But all of these things you could do now. But just engagement, you have to know. You are a stranger. 
to her and she's a stranger to you. You're only promising. So if you're gonna marry after six months, then you see each other when it's necessary. Or if you wanna plan something out. Can we sit and talk about what are we gonna do? Yes, you can. Again, in a place where people see you, they can't hear you, it's fine. Like you sit in, in a, but don't sit in a room. Like you go to her house, you sit in her room, you lock the door and her father is outside waiting for you. And you're like, we're talking about marriage. What marriage? The shaitan is the third person between you and her. Outside of the house, shaitan is also with you because people don't care about you. But if you have her brother and he's sitting there looking at you, you're not gonna even dare to touch your hand. Because he's like, hey, <laughs> I'm here. But he can't hear what you're saying. So the deen puts limits, why? Wallahi, my, my, especially my sisters. Wallahi, most of the limits, especially in marriage, it's put there as conditions to protect you more than the man. Why? Because to a man, even if they divorce, what happens if a man divorces a woman? Tomorrow he could get married. And he was like, eh, I don't care. Bye bye, have a nice day. But what about the sister? Nowhere to go. She can't get married till she passes a certain period. Okay. She, and who's gonna marry somebody who's divorced in some, in some places? This is like, uh, khalas, she's divorced. That means end of life, which is not correct. So that is, when Islam puts these rules, Islam is trying to say, you're very honorable. Take care of yourself. That's why some, some, sometimes the sisters uh, say, you say, for example, uh, you want to put conditions? No, 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 he loves me. Not put conditions, kill him with conditions. Say, I want this and this and this and this, as long as it doesn't contradict the deen. Why? Because he's going to think a million times before he divorces you. He's going to think a million times before, before he could end the relation, just like that. Because he has worries to worry about. So either he fix it or try to change. See all these? These are all rules. Imam Malik rahimahullah said, even for a sister, he said, I prefer that the engagement should be secret, not public. Everybody's like, no, I need a party that every my friends are invited. Why Imam Malik said that? Why do you think Imam Malik said that? He liked that. Why? Huh? Why? Prevent fitna. Huh? Prevent fitna from happening. What fitna? Like an engagement party, like unless it's a conflict. No. So if the engagement breaks, not everyone's not asking questions what happened. Then. Thank you. Because when the engagement breaks, sister will go. Nothing happened. A brother, nothing happened. But when people get involved, people is gonna come and say, "Why did he break the engagement? What's wrong with her? Maybe she did that. Maybe he did that." And then, then the two families that. The engagement broke between them, actually are fighting each other now because they have rumors that spread in and backbiting and think. That's why Imam Malik says, it's better to make that engagement time as a secret. Not secret that you say, only me and you knows about it. No, my family and your family, that's enough. We got engagement. You wanna do a wedding that costs 20,000 million dollars? Go ahead. Later on, this is your wedding and it has to be public. You can't just marry them at your home, only you and him. You have to make it public. But he says the engagement, let's just cut off on it. And now I would say, cut off on the engagement parties because it's overspending and it's israf. People in Syria can't find place to stay. I know it's your favorite night, but your favorite night is actually the wedding. Engagement, instead of spending $20,000 in engagement parties, you could spend $5,000 and get the same result. Because at the end of the night, he's going to his house, you're going to your house, Story's over, second day people wouldn't even mention it. And you know people, they only remember the evil of the things, not the good things that happened. Like you invite them to a wedding, and all I say that, and you invite them to food, okay? And you spend 20,000 on food. What do they talk about after they leave? Yeah, the meat was not cooked well. <laughs> they should have bought the rice from Costco, not Walmart. They, did you eat? Yes, and I took three plates home. Okay, then shut up. <laughs> this is what people really remember. You go home and they, they're pleasing people is almost impossible. So now I'm gonna do engagement party that costs 20,000 where people second day, they're gonna forget about it. And then the engagement, may Allah forbid, breaks. Then now what? I'm gonna do another engagement that's 20,000, 20,000. You have people they can, with that 20,000, maybe help somebody to get married like you. 
divide 20,000, 10 for you and 10 for somebody. Say, I'm going to give this 10 for the sake of Allah to somebody who don't have money to get married. And then you get more reward and so on and so on. So all these rules, Islam makes as again, prevent the fitna and prevent the problems from happening. So this is the time of engagement. I hope inshallah I have covered everything about the uh, engagement and any question about engagement. Yes. Um, regarding the concept of the ring, it started from Christianity. Yes. And then you said that the other part came in where it's shirk related. But for the Christianity part, is there any idea that the Prophet in his time they actually used rings? No. They so used rings as not our uh, engagement rings. When I say engagement rings, you guys know what I mean. Uh, when you say she's my fiance, you have to put the ring. Oh, this is another problem that happened, by the way. When you get, who's gonna put the ring in her hand? <laughs> See, and I, I'm serious. We these little things we don't pay attention to. He's gonna touch the hand and put the ring. Is he allowed to touch her hand? No. You know what the Prophet ﷺ says about touching somebody's hand, it, it, and it works for both. He says uh, a man and a woman, if they touch hands, or he says it's better for a person to be hit in his head with an iron stick to be hit in his head with an iron stick than touching somebody's hand that he's not, he's not allowed or she's not allowed to. So now, and the sisters, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, the brothers I know, mashallah, you go somewhere and like you buy something and she's like, hi, how are you? And you're like, hi, how are you? <laughs> did I tell you about the story of the sheikh? Yeah, I did? Let's end with that story. There was a sheikh in prison and he said his story it's all over YouTube. He said when I was in prison, we were standing in line and the chaplain was next to me and she was a lady and officers were next and so on. So I said a woman came and she was the, the boss, the head, chaplain. And she came and she shook hand till she came to him. The woman next to him, she told her, he doesn't shake hand. She said, oh, no problem. <laughs> and she hugged him. The sheikh said, wallah, when she did that, I'm like, oh, la la la, what am I gonna, <laughs> I'm stuck, <laughs> okay? He said, I don't shake and I don't hug, <laughs> both. So sometimes we actually, we happen, like sister, you might be somewhere and you have your, your professor or your somebody and says, oh, hi. Remember this hadith. It's better to be hit in your head with an iron stick and try it. Go home today, okay? Don't say the sheikh <laughs> told me, but go home and just get a, something very hard, okay? A steel, <laughs> just uh, uh, an urban, really. <laughs> just not to take home. No, just play with yourself, say Bismillah. <laughs> See how it feels. Rasulullah says to get hit, okay, is better. Like if somebody does that, it's better than you touching somebody's hand that is haram to touch, like other than. Um. So he's gonna do that. He's gonna put the ring. How's he gonna put the ring? He's gonna aim? MashaAllah. <laughs> Even if he aims, it won't go in, correct? And she's gonna put the ring. So no. They, they, so if somebody else does it for them, no problem. But Rasulullah told the man, go buy her ring. He said, I can't find. He said, buy it from iron. He said, I can't. Steel, I can't. He says, buy it from uh, even wood. Make a ring from wood. He said, I don't have money to buy wood. He said, okay. Do you have Quran? He said, yeah. He said, okay. Go ahead and give her mahr, the Quran that you memorize. So yes, we give her something, but I'm talking about the engagement ring that you put in the right hand and then during uh, the wedding night, you move it from the right to the left. If we are doing it again, I am, I, I myself dislike it and my wife knows and she's gonna hear that. I told her I'm not gonna wear that, okay? And people write their names inside, right? And the day they get married and the reason for that is to keep connect. If you believe that for this reason, that it connects the heart and it's better to keep the relation going and if he takes it off, it's a big problem and you're gonna destroy your house for it, then it's haram. But if you just wear it because everybody does it and it becomes a tradition or a custom, or you just tell people, you know, like the sister, they, or the, even the brother, I don't know, the sisters more, they like to go and they say, MashaAllah, they, they, they want to show everybody, they got engaged. If this is the reason you're doing it, then inshallah that will be fine and there will be no problem. Other than this, I'm worried about the shirk part or the, the belief, the connection, and just to get rid of that, wear it in the middle finger, not the other finger. So. Yes. Two small things. Uh, one, uh, the, what is the role of istikhara during this period of engagement? Second, when you go to see someone, do you, uh, as you said, like uh, we must bring some gift for for the girl specifically or for the family? Well, for for both. No. So for, uh, of course, you have to be nice. If you go the first day, okay, sisters. If somebody come to you first day and he doesn't bring anything, are you gonna accept? What are you gonna say about him? 
So for both, actually. For the family, bring them fruit. <laughs> this apple, they all share it. Okay? But for the sister, buy her something that... See what she like, and you could tell through people. Okay? If she like flower, but, but don't go buy one. If she say, I like flower, you go get one flower. <laughs> Come on. Okay? This is the time that you show most of generosity. Some people are not generous. This is just a, a habit. If a sister is Allah tests her with a brother who is not generous, good luck. I'm sorry, but may Allah help you with them. Some people are not generous. Like when they go visit, really, they spend three, four hours in a person's house. They eat, they drink, they use the bathroom. They want to use their bed to sleep, but they don't bring anything with them. And then they complain, the tea didn't have enough sugar. No, it shouldn't be like that. So you bring for both if you're able to. Of course, it shouldn't be you don't bring them gold 10,000 and her gold 10,000. You bring something that is reasonable. Istikhara, the time of istikhara is the time when you're thinking, not the time that you already made a decision. Because istikhara said, Oh Allah, if you know that this sister is good for me, then make it easy and help me to go through it. And if you know that this sister is not good for me, then protect me from getting there or protect me from her and keep me away from her. This is the and the sister should say the same thing. This is the should be done before you even agree or disagree. Why? Because when you're making it, and I noticed that in Salah, you're like, oh Allah, if she is good for me, then please, please, please make her mine. And you come to the second one, you say, and if she's not good, okay. But, Ya Allah, please make it good for me. Like, you try to switch the dua because you're really interested. Like somebody who, who likes a car, and he's going to buy a car. And he's like, that's it, I love this car. And you're like, make istikhara, my brother. What's istikhara? He's already into the process of going to, to buy the car. So the process happens now. Like, you're making istikhara. You saw this sister. You're interested. You think she's religious. Or you like something about her. And you want to go forward? Make istikhara. Like I made my istikhara, I prayed to Raqqa, I did the du'a of istikhara. What happens? No dreams. Forget the shuyukh who tells you you're going to see a good dream. No. Because anybody who, who thinks of something in the morning, sees it at night. So if you, if you have a sister in your mind all day, <laughs> expect to see her in your dream. That doesn't mean she's yours. Okay? So no good dream after istikhara. Anybody who says good dream, bring me a proof or evidence. Here you go, on camera. <laughs> Because people make up things, I don't know where they bring it from. Some other people, they tell you, as soon as you do istikhara, you feel like ah, coolness comes to your heart. What coolness? What if the room is cold? That's the temperature. That's not coolness. Okay? And some other people, they tell you sometime, Allah, you see light. What light? We already have electricity. Okay? So what happened? What is istikhara for? Istikhara shows you if this thing is good for you, through the way out, if it's getting easier, like I go to a sister, I tell her father, I'm interested in your daughter. He asks her, she said, let me think. Then one week she says, okay, no problem. Then I go and talk to her, what do you want? She's like, whatever, inshallah, and we want to live together. And I feel like things are moving forward and making, it's getting easier, therefore istikhara worked. But if things are getting, like you go buy a car, you do istikhara. The day you go buy a car, you lose your money. You're like, I'm going, man. I'm going to borrow money and go. Okay, you borrow money, you get into an accident with your old car. You're like, ah, that means I'm going to buy a car. You keep moving, problems happen. That is telling you that you shouldn't move forward to these things. That's what istikhara does. So it should be before the action, not through the action. And istikhara, and the other thing is istishara. Istishara is asking for huh, advice. Ask people who has experience. Ask for advice. Ask somebody from her family. She asks about you, your friends. She says, this person came and asked for my hand. What do you know about him? Is he good? Does he pray? Does he fast? Does he do this? And we said before, again, level of religious differ between people. You want somebody who memorized 20 Jews. No. But what if, what if she memorized 20 Jews and her tongue is evil than the shaitan? What if he has a beard and he's a very nice looking guy and he prays five times a day but well, he's the biggest liar in Davis? What am I going to do with somebody like that? Rasulullah said, they asked him, he said, Ya Rasulullah, a woman who prays at night, fasts every, almost every day. She does her salah on time, but she's very, bad to, she's very bad to her neighbors. He said, she's in hellfire. 
They said, Ya Rasulullah, a woman who prays only five times a day, fasts only Ramadan. She doesn't have money to give charity, but she's very good to her neighbor. He said she's in the highest level of Jannah. So now the level of religious varies between these two. We look at the first one as, Washa Allah, she has the sujood sign on her forehead. But she's very bad as behavior or characteristic. So again, istikhara and istishara inshallah. Any question from the sister? Anything you want to know about engagement? Yes. You shouldn't tell. Even I tell the brothers and the sisters, if you get ma if you get engaged and you had past that you're no longer going through and it's not connected to your future, you should not tell it to your other partner. So if he, if he tells you, for example, uh, did you have a girlfriend? You could say no, and you did, or the other way around. Or if he says, uh, did you did you uh, for example, did you wear hijab before? Were you always wearing hijab? He should first of all, he shouldn't be. Asking these questions because you already either wear hijab or wants to wear hijab or going to wear hijab. So if the past is not continuous, then he shouldn't ask. And if he asks, you could you could say uh, no. As long as there's no connection, okay? There's not nothing is connected. Like a brother who was married has a son and he comes and say, I'm never married before. <laughs> well, this is gonna cause problem because later his son is gonna come and say, Hey, how you doing? I inherit with you. Inherit? Who are you? I'm his son. So anything that will reflect to the future, you could you have to say it. Anything that is past, keep it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive it and, and the person shouldn't even ask. For the brothers and sisters, so don't ask about these matters. Don't go and be like, tell me about from what, what year were you born? 1980 something? Tell me all your life from 80 something till 2016. Like, I don't have to tell you that. It's me right now. I am religious. I am praying. I am doing this. I, I have nothing in the past to, to hide. And if there is anything, alhamdulillah, I left it, whatever. It shouldn't be like that. And first meeting should not be about this. Your first meeting should not be questioned. Inshallah, we'll talk about it more next time. Shouldn't be questioned. You shouldn't be like, what did you do when you were old? What did you do? What did, like, the person is like, are you a police officer? You're investigating my case? This is not the case. You ask, what education do you have? What, sc what school did you go to? How was your high school education? Things that is very general, very broad, not specific. Till you get to know each other a little bit, then you could go on to specific questions, but not too specific, at least. Yes, so in the name of, last question. Yeah, okay. okay. In the name of honesty, like nowadays, I know many of my friends, when they get to know someone, they like purposely, they talk about each and everything. And you, as you said, we should not be talking about things which yes. is past, which yes. has no connection. So will they put, if someone lies at that time, will that person be considered? No, inshallah, no. Because the lie, inshallah, between the man and his wife, as we're going to talk about marriage, the lie between the man and his wife, inshallah, will be forgiven. As long as the lie will take nobody's right. Like you, you steal a uh, hundred dollars from your wife and she says, where did the money go? And you say, astaghfirullah, maybe shaitan is in the house. That's a lie that you're responsible for because you took her right. But a lie like a, a lie that doesn't that doesn't consider any rights or doesn't validate any right, it's fine inshallah. So you're 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 actually hiding your past because you actually left it. And you ask Allah to forgive you. And it's hidden, it was hidden. As long as I said there is no connection to it. Like a, a sister came and she asked me uh, one time about um, she was married before. And she actually didn't completely get married. And something happened. Should she tell her husband or not? Well, then you have to ask her what exactly happened. And then if there is, okay, if things happen that are not related to life and they won't show later, then and like that, these things. So we don't have to tell about our past. I don't have to tell her. In high school, ah, oh, mashallah, it was very good. Drugs, girls, nightclub. Why? If you already ask Allah to forgive you and Allah hided your sin, why are you exposing yourself to her or why is she exposing herself to you? Okay? And this always leaves an effect for the future. She was always remember. She's like, if you see a girl in, in, in Walmart or something, and she's like, ah, oh, so she maybe that's her? You're like, La wallah, that's not her. Also, mashallah, you knew more than one? And so on. 
especially mashallah sisters are very very precise with that stuff <laughs> so just tell her I never knew anybody before you except my mother and my sisters <laughs> and it's a lie because nobody no one didn't know anybody because when you say I didn't know anybody before you that's a lie but you should say I never had a relation with anybody before you okay so you could lie in a way they say I never knew I, I never okay stuff for the the brothers, they want a uh, special lesson, inshallah, <laughs> private lesson. Subhanak Allah, Muhammad, Shadal, Lelah, Lelah, Tastakhar, Gautawla. Inshallah, if we could have the attendance, if you write your name on the piece of paper, inshallah.